In the new podcast, TE1 NFL vet and record holder Greg Olson investigates the evolution of the tight end position from extra lineman to dynamic playmaker through discussions with Hall of Famers and current superstars like Shannon Sharp, Tony Gonzalez, and Travis Kelsey. Listen to TE1 with Greg Olson on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, October 7th. Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers. Back with you for another episode of the podcast. We have some buy or sell on the show today. We've got more news. I'm always afraid of the news these days. But we got it. But we have news. Yeah. We also have a fantasy retirement ceremony. We'll be... Mm. A celebration of yes. life. It, yes, it, it's a celebration. It's much like when we retired Mike's man bun, if you remember. Yeah, it remember? was great. It was a celebration. Wait, a couple, Time to let go. A couple thousand people were there for that celebration, I believe. That's right. And then we uh, sailed it off in the boat. Yep. And mm-hmm. I shot the arrow. Yep. With you the- are an unbelievable shot, which... I I never knew until you burned my man bun to the ground. People yeah. hair think smells that's, bad though when it's on fire. It's, that's it's very not, true. Yeah. yeah, I let it I let it drift a while, but not far enough. <laughs> How many shots did it take you? Uno, <laughs> just First one, try. one shot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it was a dignified celebration. But yes, we we will be retiring some names from fantasy rosters today, celebrating their accomplishments, and then um, you know, letting them just just be. Just be for these final <laughs> few years. And there are two types of retirement. I want to be clear about this. There is the kind of – there's the the player that knows they're on the way, right? And they accept the new role, mm-hmm. and they're, they're this is it's their time. J- Larry Fitzgerald, he can live with a two-catch week, right? Yeah. And then there's some that <laughs> kind of have to, have to be told their time is up, and the new kid's on the block, and they've got to go away. So we got both of those today. Thursday night preview as well. Some mailbag. We'll answer your questions, get you ready for week five. We'll get ourselves ready for week five. Ooh, it's a busy week. It is. It is. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers if you want to uh, check us out over there. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. Uh, I, I'm supposed to say smash the subscribe button because that'll mm. get you twice as many subscribes. Mm-hmm. So the, uh, the and a lot of broken mouse pads. Yeah, oh, do you smash them? Oh, you man. have to hit the monitor. Actually, it's hard to break your mouse pad, but it can be done. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> I'm still picturing Mike's no. man bun going out in the middle of a <laughs> in the middle of a lake. All right, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week we all went two for three on buy-sell. Amari Cooper, 15 fantasy points. Jason and I sold it. Mike bought it, and he was the wide receiver, too. We were oh so stupid. Mm. Devontae Parker, we all bought it. Oh, Top sweep. 20 wide receiver. Clean sweep. Wide receiver 14 was his result. And then Daryl Henderson. Ooh, Ooh, woof. Jason and I both sold 120 total yards. Now, he got real close. He got up to 38. Hmm. It's just a solid 90 away. McVeigh. <laughs> I blame you. All right. Here's week five. Buy or sell. Uh, which which either Brooks or Kyle have entitled Crazy Eights. So Crazy. Crazy. Deshaun Watson. It's been a rough start. Top eight quarterback this week against Jacksonville. Week Ooh. one, he was the 12th overall. Then he was 21st, 17th, and 15th. Last week, great matchup. Minnesota still could not put up a top 12 finish. So this is tough. 
Yeah, I mean, when when you see the matchup against Jacksonville, you start to get excited. You look and you see the talent. You can have the narrative of the head coaching change and the pizzazz that's coming. Uh, in fact, I I went to make Deshaun Watson. I looked at some of that. And I was like, maybe I'll have Deshaun Watson be my start of the week because people might be unsure. And so I went back and I looked at his Jacksonville history in that matchup, and it's, eh, well, let's just say Deshaun Watson is not my start of the week, and I am selling. Yeah, this is this is tough. I will actually buy it. I think rejuvenation is in order here. Bill O'Brien, uh, it was an oppressive situation there. A lot of pressure. That pressure comes off. The matchup is great. I will buy it. Here's here's the problem with what's going on with he Desha has Hopkins, Deshaun right? Deshaun Watson. Yeah, he, he's back. <laughs> just a, just one game stint. Uh, fourteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. That is the amount of rushing yards per game that Deshaun Watson is averaging. Gross. That is like he's not he's not the player that we are we are used to, the one we are have come accustomed to watching on the field. Uh will the coaching change help that? Will it allow him to It's important to blame Bob for all things. So uh, absolutely. It has to be his fault if this is happening. Oh, can we, can we put Bill O'Brien in the retirement ceremony? Yeah, I mean they already did, so <laughs> Uh, I'm selling. Okay. Kareem Hunt, one of the top stories this week. Kareem Hunt, will he be a top eight running back against Indianapolis? We know Ooh. that Indianapolis defense is stellar, but Kareem Hunt is the running back one on a the best rushing offense in football. I'm going to buy it. Yeah. The, I mean, the reality is we've said if either one of these guys goes down, Chubb or Hunt, the other one's going to be a top five back. and that's true. Kareem Hunt is going to be a top five back. It is not going to be this week. It's going to be over time, over a six-week period. I believe in the Indianapolis Colts defense. I am selling a top eight performance this week. Yeah, I believe in the defense, too. I will sell. Allen Robinson, is he going to be a top eight wide receiver against Tampa Bay? The last two weeks, he was the sixth and ninth ranked wide receiver. Uh, the Tampa Bay defense, though, pretty stout. They've been good against opposing wide receivers this year. I'm selling it. Yeah, I'm definitely selling it. They have, um, I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, who's been uh, playing shadow coverage. Shadowed Michael Thomas week one. That was before the injury. Michael Thomas did nothing. Shadowed Keenan Allen this last week. Keenan did nothing. I'm definitely selling Allen Robinson top eight this week. Oh, man. Top eight. Come on, buy it, Mike. Oh, buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't. Make a bad call. I can't. Come on, on, you love Nick Foles. Come on. Why? Well, what? I did not love Nick Foles. Are you, uh, you could. He's been a top 10 wide receiver back-to-back -back weeks. Were you at uh, Carlton Davis? Is that who you were trying to think of, Jay? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, it. Uh, no, I will, I will sell. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. <laughs> PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Crazy it's, eights more like crazy sales. Thanks, Mike. You Thank got you it. for that. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit towards your first purchase stock news news and notes from around the league all right the patriots cornerback stephen gilmore did i say stephen you did yeah my bad stefan gilmore test positive for COVID 19 will not practice on wednesday i wish it was stephen gilmore because he doesn't yeah that's he not does a patriots player it would be less impactful to yes. their secondary no, Gilmore had a great game, too, this past week. Uh, no positive tests today with the Chiefs. No additional positive tests with the Patriots. We can't do anything but monitor the situation in yep. the NFL right now. The, the NFL was very, very serious with teams over the weekend. New protocols, everything from video surveillance in terms of uh, following the protocols to uh, more stringent responsibilities for all of the teams. We can be optimistic. We don't know how this disease behaves in an open field and in, in the middle of a game where you're not indoors and prolonged exposure to one another. We can just be hopeful that nobody else is infected and go from there. Right now, the game is not in jeopardy, according to sources connected to the situation, but we've been there before with mm -hmm. these games not in jeopardy. So... That's what's going on. Unfortunately, two more Tennessee Titans players have also tested positive. This is the big one. Yeah, this means that the game this week against the Buffalo Bills is in jeopardy. 
the team cannot reopen the facilities without uh, consecutive negative test days. So yeah, and this they were able to have a a simple, elegant solution to fix the postponement of one game. I have no idea what the NFL will do here with if the Titans have to miss two games in a row. I mean, if this isn't like baseball. You can't just have a double head, double header and catch up because you missed a whole bunch of games. This this means that we are they will have to play something. There will be a week eighteen of of some kind. Uh, There's no chance that they could literally take a game off the schedule for everybody, build a new buy in, and keep the well you i don't you wouldn't take I'm a just game off balling. no 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 you you wouldn't take a game off you would take an entire weekend off if i have kind of thought that seems like the most logical answer for the nfl they don't want to do that would you not take the weekend off for the two teams like the titans making up the game that week well i mean like cuz they've already expend they've burnt through their bye week and you you throw the whole schedule into disarray if you have a team miss two weeks in a row so you would almost have to postpone the entire NFL to make sure that everything gets back on track. I don't know if they're going to be willing to do that. Uh, the, so the, this is – you got to stay tuned. We will give you the, the news as soon as we hear it because this is like fantasy fantasy playoffs. That's weeks 14 through 16. Like this could mess some Maybe. things up yeah. big time. Yeah, you just pay attention. Everything we're talking about right now is truly speculation – and curiosity so just keep paying attention we'll tell you what to do as we know what the nfl is doing to follow up on yesterday's discussion about the positive test for cam newton um ian rapaport talked about this you uh you're unlikely to have newton this week it is not impossible to have newton this week it is a five-day period without symptoms two negative tests it puts them on a timeline that is almost uh, it's very unlikely to right. have Cam Newton, but it is not impossible. That's right. I said it was a 10-day uh, symptom-free. Th that was if you had symptoms. Correct. Cam has not showed symptoms yet. All right. Kyle Allen will be getting the start at quarterback for the Washington football team in week five. And not only that, Dwayne Haskins is not even going to back him up. Whew. Alex Smith Whew. is going to be active as the team's number two. The team is moving forward with one of the least accurate quarterbacks in the NFL last season. Yeah, Kyle Allen is... And yet a huge upgrade. <laughs> well, he's he he's an upgrade for fantasy, in my opinion, because he is willing to check down a lot to the quarterback. And so, to the running back? Or, yeah, yeah, thank you, to the running back. Like Antonio Gibson, I expect his targets to go up. Uh, Terry McLaurin, if he succeeded with Dwayne Haskins, he can succeed with Kyle Allen. And we also saw DJ Moore have his big breakout season last year, mostly with Kyle Allen. This is rough, man, for Dwayne Haskins. We had speculated last week with the Baltimore Ravens was could be the, the end. Then Dwayne Haskins went – I know he put up a lot of empty statistics, so he was, he was quite bad. But for the team to completely move on at this point – can I speculate? Sure, please do. If you're if you're going to move on from a player who, uh, by every measure, Daniel Jones has been a worse quarterback than Dwayne Haskins this year. Total uh, yes. turnovers, passer yes. rating, all of those metrics. If you're going to change your opinion perceptively on Dwayne Haskins because of a matchup with Baltimore, you didn't want Dwayne Haskins to be your quarterback to begin with. Sure. You gave him rope, but you didn't have plans for him to be your future. That's what I think because – there, there's more than we know. There's locker room presence. There's picking up the playbook. There's mistakes that we don't see. And I just wonder if there's more than meets the eye than just saying, boy, Dwayne Haskins didn't have a great game against Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, Albert Breer, an NFL insider, was was talking about the fact that it's it, it's exactly what you're saying. It's, it's about the other 10 guys in the huddle. And it seems like Haskins does not have the confidence of the team that was his speculation, uh, it's and then you you combine that with Smith being the backup now, right? Exactly. Well, th this is when you make this move, you know Kyle Allen isn't great, and so you know he's going to go out there and struggle, and people are going to immediately say, "Okay, are they going to go back to Haskins?" You have to say Haskins isn't the backup, so there's no chance. And to me, what that means is, no matter how bad Kyle Allen plays, he's going to stay the the four quarter. Quarterback. The Rams defense, uh, you were going to start them before, you're going to start them now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
Deontay Johnson has cleared the concussion protocol. We expected this, but it's great to hear, and he will play in this upcoming week's game. Is there any other news that you guys want to get into? A reminder, drop it like it's hot. Uh, waivers going through this morning. Make sure you pay attention to who was let go because big-time moves, teams getting desperate. Another reminder, this is week five that we're heading into. Click on the standings tab in your league. Go look at teams that are sitting one and three and zero oh and four. That's mm -hmm. the team you trade for their uh, best, best player. Their best player. Teams are going to get desperate to make a move. I just traded for Christian McCaffrey because of doing this yesterday, looking at records and seeing who might be tilting a little bit. This is the time to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's great advice. I would also say another tip is that all these questionable games where there's speculation around. Um, you know, so long as that's, you know, not the Thursday night game, which it's not this week, just throw those guys towards your flex. Give yourself a little bit more option to to pivot even if they are your star player. It, it, it'll, it'll allow you to look at your roster a little bit more clearly. Now, before we get to oh, the big this is the celebration. ceremony, football fans, are you ready as an Amazon Prime member? Are you already an Amazon Prime member? Did you know that you can watch Thursday Night Football live on Prime Video? That's right. It's the future of football. You can catch the action on almost any device anywhere in the world. You could choose your favorite announcer, including Troy Aikman and jo Joe Buck, or Bucky Brooks and Daniel Jeremiah from Move the Sticks, or Chris Long and Kerry Champion from NFL Next. You get the control. Uh, get next-gen stats and why watch. Why aren't we an option, Jason? Uh, man, we should. I be. don't know, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Watch in game replays on demand, all within Prime Video's X Ray. Next gen stats are real time stats powered by AWS. There's no more waiting around. You can access the current stats anytime. Need to check how your fantasy player's doing? This is the ideal way to stay up to speed. In game, on demand replays are accessible on your remote, on Fire TV, or by turning your mobile device sideways so if you're a streamer or you simply want the most custom way of watching thursday night football tune in live every thursday starting october 8th coverage begins at 7 p.m and kickoff is at 8 20 p.m eastern on prime video also available on fox and nfl network nfl network simulcast subject to change thursday night football is presented by bud light platinum all right. I don't know if this is going to become an annual thing. I think it might. We're going to have a little fantasy retirement ceremony. Al Borland has uh, got the orchestra together mm -hmm. and prepared. They're all tuned up. Some music. And um, let's just start going through this list. Now, before I begin the ceremony, I do want to bring this up. When someone retires, there's always a chance that a, another organization wants to hire this person once again. And if... Brooks, if you want to jump in and hire any of these uh, retirees and bring them onto your roster, you just jump in and let us know, okay? I'll let you know. Just in case there's some demand out there we don't know about. But let's begin. Yes. Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones. We will never forget the 2017 season. The wide receiver nine. Incredible. Marvin, thank you for your service. Thank you for all the touchdowns oh, yes. that you had. 48, 36, 53rd, and 102nd through four weeks. Farewell. Sir, his weekly rankings. <laughs> A.J. Green. Oh, it is It is very hard for me to accept your retirement. Uh, started your career with five straight <laughs> top 24 seasons. And really, I learned, as your team learned this year, that your time is done. Mm-hmm. Get off my fantasy roster. Yeah, T.Y. Hilton, man, you also started your career with five top 25 seasons, and you were so great with Andrew Luck, Speaking who of, has also retired. Speaking did you of know, the Colts. Did you know, by oh. the way, that T.Y. Hilton has not surpassed 87 yards in any game without Andrew Luck since he left? Mm. It's over. Philip Rivers, a nice... Steady run. Steady stream. Steady stream. From 2013 to 2018. Philip Rivers, thank you. Thank you for all of your fantasy. It was great. Work. Your services are no longer you know he's required. Like, he's like an 80% passer this year. He, oh, that? phenomenal. Uh, yes. Checkdowns. 
Brandon Cooks. You have not been cooking. No, oh, so many accomplishments. Between the injuries, between, well, 190, uh, Goose last week, 80th the week before. And all the and all the different teams. I'm sorry, Nate, again. <laughs> all the different teams. Well, Frank Gore. Oh, yes, I'm Frank Gore. I'm sure you will play in the NFL for 10 more seasons. But you won't play for fantasy I want him to play until managers. his son gets there. Absolutely. I hope you do for fantasy purposes. Farewell. Congratulations on your retirement. Adrian I, Peterson. I'm not retiring him. You... Uh, I'm not retiring him. Of course you won't. I didn't realize he was in here. Yeah, we're we're taking care of it, Jason. Adrian Peterson. We'll never Jason's forget. Jason's not retiring him either. There's a place. Oh no! He's, He's had three weeks as a top thirty running back yeah. this year. Uh, Adrian Peterson does not belong on this list. Uh, but Larry Fitzgerald does. Sixty uh, eighth, forty sixth, one hundred twentieth. In 100th, he is not involved in the offense. We love you, Larry, more than most. Larry Legend. But it's I, over. I'm happy that I got to be here at your retirement. Yeah. You've meant a, a lot big... to me. Uh, both for fantasy and real life, I will never have you on my roster again. And then, of course, Judge Giamatti, his final day here at... Uh, oh, we're retiring the judge? <laughs> <laughs> his eyes just went huge. I'm just kidding, Brooks. That was a surprise. You're not retiring. Oh, I think you've it, got many decades left, Brooks. I think we surprised uh, all of these players. I think he just bought a house too, so that's why his <laughs> eyes got real big. He just you just bought a house, didn't you, Brooks? Yes, sir. It's gonna be First a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna keep showing up here. Yeah, yeah, and that's why we uh, we figured we stop paying you because if yeah. you come and do the work anyways. All right, that was tough, Mike. You really retire Adrian Peterson with those numbers? No way. No yes, way. you're gonna need him. Mm. I yes. mean, the the reality is, if you're gonna need him, you're gonna lose. That's so why that, he's I mean, retired. Yeah. Okay. All right. You guys want to do some mailbag first or Thursday night preview first? It's up to you. Oh, I get to pick. Yeah, spin the wheel. Thursday night. Thursday night breakdown. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at three and one take on the Chicago Bears at three and one. The Buccaneers are four and a half point road favorites. It's a forty four point over under. Yeah, I mean, I just this is a script game to me. I don't see myself being surprised by the outcome. And I'm really not that excited with the Chicago Bears in this game. Tampa Bay. Uh, they're on a roll right now. Tom Brady, five touchdowns last week. Nick Foles looked atrocious unless you hold them up against Mitch Trubisky, in which case he looks reasonably talented. And um, I've been really disappointed. I mean, David Montgomery, he's in my one of my fantasy rosters. He's in my lineup. He's at the ro running back position because it's a Thursday night game. I'm not going to put him in my flex. I'm going to leave that flexibility. But it hasn't been impressive. It wasn't a great debut with Nick Foles. Got some targets, but can't get anything going on the ground. Not sure anything is going to get going on the ground against this Buccaneers defense. Yeah, uh, I, I think that the Buccaneers defense is good, and I think the Chicago Bears defense is good. So that scares me from a fantasy perspective. Now, so far, so good for the Buccaneers offense. Last week, was not expecting big things for Tom Brady. He was my biggest miss in rankings uh, and it was it was wide because I had kind of bodied him a little bit and then he goes out and throws five touchdowns I felt really good for about half that game and then he went nuclear uh, the question is do, you know will the short week matter having to throw all those passes now he doesn't have the same recovery time did you guys see Jarvis Landry's tweet about no. he, so he had the one throw he said you know I I threw it once. I felt like I pitched nine innings. You know? <laughs> so you got he, uh, to be fair. Jarvis Landry put everything he had into that throw. That was an. I awesome watched Jarvis throw. Landry throw a first pitch out. He did it with the other hand. What? Yeah, he pitched right-handed when he threw a baseball, and wow. he that was a great pass by him in that game. Yeah. So, but anyway, anyways, getting back here, let's let's start at the top with Tom Brady because I. I have hesitation having bodied him last week to body him again 
but everything that I look at says this is a really difficult matchup. Chicago Bears are number two against fantasy quarterbacks right yeah, now. I, I mean, second worst. Yeah, two weeks ago, Matt Ryan was the quarterback 27. And granted, you know, they if you look at the schedule, so they had Phillip Rivers this last week, which didn't need to do anything. So fantasy points didn't come his way. Um, when they played against Matt Ryan, they were missing Julio. Week one was uh, Stafford. No Galladay, and then you had Daniel Jones. So maybe these numbers are inflated for the defense, but I, you know, they've been a, a good defense for a long time. Yeah, and if you have questions about getting to start Josh Allen this week because of the COVID situation, you don't really have the option to wait unless we got news. Before, like if if Tom Brady's a pivot mm -hmm. for you, you can't pivot late. Like he, that's the category he's in for me is a probably not trying to start him, but you can start him. I mean, do you make anything of? Uh, I know Mike Evans played through it, uh, the ankle problem. He came with a with a monster performance, but he that was a, the ankle injury was during the game. You know, you could often we see the player they got the adrenaline going. The the ankle hasn't swollen up yet. Mm -hmm. They play through. We ha we don't have an update currently on Mike Evans' situation, but do you have any concern? It, Chris Godwin not likely to play if Mike Evans is. Really ho hobbled by that ankle against a strong defense that is already uh, fourth against fantasy wide receivers. Where where are you when you factor all that in? You're talking about with Evans? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a concern to begin with. Uh, just the fact that Jason's talking about the part of the game that looked ugly. I can tell you the part of the game. It's from when Mike Evans went off the field until Mike Evans came back out on the field, even as a distraction for parts of that game. Targeting Justin Watson and Scotty Miller did, it did not look as uh, spectacular. Am I concerned about Mike Evans? I don't know if that concern translates into putting him on my bench if he's active. Yeah, you're probably going to start him. Uh, he's got a good chance of ending up with four or five yards and four or five touchdowns. That's fair. Um, you know, but but with a hobbled, I, I'm I'm not I'm not going in on Brady. We were just talking before the show. Brady's been great. He really has three of the four weeks. He's been top 10, but at some point you just, you know, one of those weeks was terrible for Brady. If he's got a hobbled Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, very unlikely to be there. I, I see him as basically out OJ Howard gone. Uh, you know, he was one of those five deep touchdowns he had I, against a good bears D. I, I feel like I don't want to bet against Brady, but I'm going to do it again. There's no way I'm benching Evans. To his credit and, no, your, not and to Evans. your joke, 7 for 122 hobbled last week with a touchdown. So uh, decided to – I mean, he's got, he's got the same Mike Evans as last year except for he threw touchdowns into his low yardage weeks. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. He was the fifth wide receiver in week two and the sixth this past week. Are you starting him, Mike? Because I certainly yes, am. Yes, okay. I, I am, but you got to monitor the practice report. What about Ronald Jones? Ronald Jones is a must-start. Uh, the volume is there. Leonard Fournette is trended to a game-time decision. I can't imagine that Fournette is going to play. You're going to have Ronald Jones and rookie running back Keyshawn Vaughn backing him up. You know, uh, Ronald Jones is the primary runner. You're probably going to see Vaughn more integrated into the passing game due to Ronald Jones having nine targets and ending with a line of six for 17. That is not getting it done through the air. So, uh, but Ronald Jones is still the, he's still a, a must play running back to me. Nine for the targets to end up with 17 yards. That is a lot of bad plays. It's also nice to get nine targets, catch six passes as a running back. Point, it, it, point, it, point, yes. point, point, oh, point. No, it certainly is, but. Scotty Miller, are you starting him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Scotty Miller is probably someone that you can. You can rely on his his volume is necessary at this point. David Montgomery, I brought him up. You guys, uh, Joshua Kelly against New Orleans or David Montgomery in this game? Joshua Kelly. Really? Yep. Jason? Uh, I would go David Montgomery. I think the workload is all his, and he's been good enough. He, he You know, <laughs> it's ironic. We, we said this coming into the season, or at least I did. He's going to be exactly what he was last year, a very high volume uh, high floor, low ceiling type of player. It's what he's been every single week. He, he's fine to be in your lineup. He's not going to crush you and, and kill you this week. He is, Whoa. He has finished inside Violent. the top 30 one out of four weeks. <clears throat> uh, this week, I, I don't think he's going to hurt you. I don't think he's going to be a great start either. I would love to have two or three running backs on my roster. I could start ahead of Montgomery, but the volume is there. 
Uh, Mark Ingram against Cincinnati or David Montgomery? Mark Ingram. Ingram. Okay. Anybody else from this game? Are you starting Jimmy Graham? <laughs> Rob Gronkowski with no O.J. I, Howard? Uh, Cameron Brait is still there. I'm, I'm not in on Rob Gronkowski. Jimmy Graham is – dude, I don't – I don't know what to do with this guy. Of you, it feels like you go, you're you're out. He has the game. You go in. He's he stinks. He's the tight end thirty five. You write him off because he's Jimmy Grandpa. He's old, and then oh, then he's the tight end one on the week. You're like, okay, I'm back in, baby. Let's go tight end twenty five. So this is sounds like a tight end. This is not what I'm. I'm not playing Jimmy Graham. Hopefully. We added some new metrics to the website. If you want to check them out, the advanced stats section for each player on their player profile, including a consistency metric, which gives a grade based on the percentage of times a player has exceeded a usable benchmark at their position. This is a very valuable tool. Jimmy Graham's an F. Jimmy Graham's an F in the consistency. Are grade. there any tight ends? And that's not A that through not. Z. That is not A, a through Z. <laughs> and that consistency score is is not just based on this season. It's it's basically looking at the last season's worth of games for every player. All right. Um, okay. I already mentioned it. Take your Thursday night players out of the flex, put them into a starting position, and then we'll have more matchup previews, the starts of the week, the taking it to 100 players, all on tomorrow's show. Let's do some mailbag. 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 Woo! All right, if you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the Submit a Question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We'll kick today's mailbag off with a voicemail question. Hey, ballers, this is Phil from Arkansas. I traded for Jarek McKinnon after Saquon Barkley got hurt, and I was wondering if you guys think he's a good option for the rest of the season, or should I try to sell him high before Raheem Mostert comes back? Thanks, love the show. Before the show, we were looking at the consistency charts at the running back position, and McKinnon has managed to score in four straight games. What do you guys think about the future? Uh, obviously, Mostert's going to come back, and I, touchdowns are hard to predict. I really, really, really want to be in on Jerick McKinnon, and I think I am. I believe that, I'm in. I believe that when Mostert comes back, McKinnon is going to be very valuable, just like he was when Mostert was there. The question is, when Mostert and Coleman come back, is there a chance that all of a sudden McKinnon is relegated to, even if it's they love him and they just want to give him more rest for playoffs, this has always been a backfield you can't really just trust for 16 games. You have to trust in short bursts. So that's where I would say if you can trade him high, and I mean high, you get value for him as you know a, a top 12 back. Melvin like Gordon. Would you trade him for Melvin Gordon? That's a great question. I, th I'd rather have Gordon. I think I would as well. It, it, it's a really ironic situation, right? Because you're worried about these players coming back, but we've been seeing Gordon without Philip Lindsay. Right. That being said, I think what he has shown while he's been without Lindsay will be enough to say, yeah, this is the player we gave a lot of money to to be that workhorse. So yeah, I would I would take Melvin Gordon. Mike, would you rather have Ronald Jones rest of season or Jarek McKinnon? Ooh, uh, I think I'd go with Ronald. McKinnon. You, I can't let this. Really? R McKinnon versus Ronald Jones? I mean, it's definitely Ronald Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's a Ronald water Jones bat. had 20 carries last week. Yeah, and just see, watch him get four carries this week. That's a bet. If it's definitely, I am McKinnon you mean rest, a rest of the season. Of season rest Jones of, versus McKinnon? Oh, I mean, it's not close to me. It's interesting. Water bed. Okay, sure. I I'm shocked. Yeah, I don't know. the The Leonard Fournette that he's actually considered a game time decision. What I what I was hearing is you know multiple weeks, if not longer, for Leonard Fournette. Raheem Mostert is the starter. Yes, I agree. Yeah, for the 49ers. Now I've been impressed with Jarek McKinnon. I'm not trying to. That bet is just based on what do I want on my fantasy roster from a guarantee standpoint. You just brought it up. You cannot really bank. On 16 games in San Francisco, not that you can bank on well, Ronald Jones. That's that's my point. But, is, but so far this year, you can. So who, far this year, Ronald Jones has been getting volume. So and last week, 111 yards on the ground. That's is, McKinnon looks great, but I can't trust it. Especially you 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 speculate on Tevin Coleman, but you don't know 
when Coleman's back, whether it's three-headed monster, Jeff Wilson involved. Well, the exact same thing with Leonard Fournette and what Keyshawn Vaughn did last week. Does he get more involved? I mean, over it's the last the exact same. over the last month of the uh, of the season, I think McKinnon and Ronald Jones, either guy could be the third guy on their roster. So I'm going to take the the team I believe in more, the offense I believe in more, uh, as far as uh, running scheme, um, not quarterback. Sure. That's why we bet. All right, uh, YouTube question. Johnny Smith or Zach Ertz rest of season? Oof. We've still yet to see the <laughs> well, Titans I don't know. play football very often. Yeah. A.J. Brown's been in part of one game. I'm I'm laughing here because I've seen a lot of Zach Ertz questions. And Mike, you've been bringing up the question of is Zach Ertz washed? Mm -hmm. You have him on your roster. So here's a little secret. When we have someone on our roster, we tend to watch that player a lot more while they're, you know, not involved on the plays where they're not getting the ball. You watch their routes because you're like, is he open? Throw the ball. Right. And you've been saying, um, it's not looking great on the field, and it's and I've been battling against you. Like, no, you Zach Ertz is you know top five. But every time I'm asked a question like this, I laugh because I it shows where I'm really at, which is I don't trust Zach Ertz, but I but I I I should like <laughs> I think I should I think I'm supposed to, but I don't. So Andy, I we know where Mike is. I don't know where I am. Where are you on Zach Ertz? I'm con I'm concerned about the way that Carson Wentz is playing and the way he's targeting Zach Ertz and the fact that Johnny has been – he's not just putting up nice performances, but he's being targeted heavily as well. This is a really tough call, but I think that Philly's going to get s more strength at the wide receiver position over the next few weeks, whether it's Jeffrey and Jackson coming back. I'm going to lean Johnny Smith. I'm going to make the bold call here. Yeah, and, and it, look, if it's this close and it's a tiebreaker worthy, Jonu Smith is, is past play. his buy, you know, in right. in theory. Now, one of his buys. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I guess oh, no. I guess this you almost have to go Zach Ertz in the sense that you don't know if the Titans are going to play this week. So, I I would go Zach Ertz unless we knew for sure that the Titans are playing. Yeah, I I'm still I'm going to go Zach Ertz over Jonu. Um just for the for the reasons you guys all uh, laid out here, but the next there was a follow up question uh, from Jared Billings who said, uh, "Oh, I thought it was an Ertz question, so I thought it was Zach Ertz or Dalton it's Schultz." It's a Johnny question, Johnny Smith or Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz, which so then you can follow the. You, you're saying Dalton Schultz? Yes. Oh, I I don't think so. I'd go Johnny. I would, I would take, go Johnny as well. I would take <clears throat> Dalton Schultz. I would take Dalton Schultz over Zach Ertz. Okay, all right. Uh, let's grab another voicemail. What's up, man? First year listener just wanted to know if you would start justin herbert over matt ryan this week thanks man appreciate it herbert <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> are we are we doing no. that what no. is the what is the old game i'm thinking about herbert? i don't know there's an old video game was it, oh you know what I'm hubert saying? oh yeah. that, that is what i was thinking of <laughs> thank you mike for saving me there You're hubert welcome. yeah yeah uh i would play uh herbert with because the, the H is silent, I would play Justin Herbert over Matt Ryan this week. Yes, I would not. I would play Matt Ryan. I do not think it's going to be a good week for Herbert. It's not going to be good for Matt Ryan either. I don't like really either guy as someone that I want to rely on. So if I have to choose this week between one of those two guys, I'm going to go with the proven vet. Breaking news: small abuse of that button here. Um, <clears throat> Jason did not live up to his. I know. I was shocked. The the waivers in our league ran, and you had written down a note of Dearness Johnson, get him. Like mm -hmm. You went full draft day. The yes, Dearness Johnson, no matter what, right? was the note you made to yourself, and your actions say that was completely false. Yeah, you didn't. Mike ended up uh, paying up for Dearness Johnson. And I Jason did not. Yeah, well, I I put in a quarter of my fab. I put in twenty five percent of my fab. That's going, I feel like, pretty hard. That um, is not all caps. Get him on a piece of paper. I believe it's the number that I said on yesterday's show. Mm, you said you were going to go hard with that specific number. Brooks, was that going hard? Nope. Okay. All right, okay. not even close. That was that's not going weak. Close. 
Okay. Well, you, Mike, you went hard. You <laughs> apparently. Let me ask you this, Jason. Simple question: Did you get him? No. Okay. All right. Let's go to another uh, in in unrelated news. Okay. Dearness Johnson is available for trade in the league of record. Hmm. Just saying. Jason will <laughs> offer you very little. I will offer you twenty five fab dollars. <laughs> yeah. For Dearness Johnson. All right. Here is. Oh my goodness. This one is. Uh, this one's interesting after Jason's diatribe on Julio Jones, his concern for Julio Jones. Joe writes in, would you trade Robbie Anderson for Julio Jones? Oh, my gosh. The answer for me is is simple, but I don't want to spoil it. Jason, we will throw to you. You were the one who spoke most worried about Julio Jones. and you th is, is Robbie Anderson, I think your, your quote was 75 cents on the dollar. Is Robbie Anderson 75 cents? I feel like Robbie Anderson's like 60 cents on the dollar. Okay. So in general, I don't love it. But this is a team-dependent move. Um, I, I hate trading from a place of, you know, if you're one in three, and you, I, I never want to tilt trade. But there's a difference between tilt trading and doing something to manufacture wins now. Um, assuming that Julio is going to miss this week, which we don't have confirmation of that. Maybe you hold off for another day, see a practice report, see what you know is 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 going on because obviously they played late in the week. So you you might want to wait a couple of days before taking this. But if Julio was going to miss this week, I would make that trade. It, it, in in that situation where I am you know one and three sure. and I'm not going to have Julio, then yeah, go ahead and and do that. But in a vacuum, all things are equal. I I I don't think that's enough for Julio. Where do you, you knew? Yeah, your I, I, I would not do this. I mean, I would rather have Julio Jones. I mean, Robbie Anderson might be the one, quote unquote, of that offense. But that's not saying the same thing as what Julio represents as the one, nor have I seen it over a longer duration to make me want to make that move. Julio Jones, man, Julio is going to be a really big chapter. I, I can't think of the right word right now, but like he is going to be a huge swing point in fantasy football this decision this, the decisions that people are making right now of if you're going in or out it's going to change the face of your fantasy league and i honestly i don't know which side i'm i'm with jason i'm concerned about the hamstring i think he's going to miss and the the body starts breaking down man especially those big wide receivers luckily we did see some vintage julio ahead of it Right. Yes, that is that is the differentiator between him, him and AJ Green sure. is that when they were on the field this year, Julio looked outstanding and youthful and like a gazelle. And now, big big hamstring blowout. Oh, <laughs> you! All right, Here uh, I am again. Jonah, which running back would you rather have as a bench stash? Brian Hill, Cam Akers. Cam, Cam Akers. Akers. Are we ever going to know who to start in that backfield? On no. any given week? Well, uh, yes. Double injury to two of the three running backs. There. Otherwise, uh, no. I mean, the the hope in Cam Akers is basically that once all three guys are healthy, he takes over. I don't know that that's going to happen, but I don't think Brian Hill is fantasy relevant unless an injury to Gurley. So I guess when, when I tie break here at Cam Akers, it's the fact that if no one on either team gets an injury, Cam Akers has a higher fantasy opportunity than Brian Hill does. I agree with you. Cam Akers is the yet-to-be-seen ceiling, too, and a better running offense. All right, Twitter question from John Johnson. He says, good day, ballers. Got Scotty Miller off the waiver wire. Would you guys play him over Michael Gallup? Gallup seems to be playing third mm. fiddle. I would argue fourth fiddle. Burned me twice this season already. This is a, a composition of your team. Like this, if you're playing your wide receiver two, I would go. I, I believe I'd go with Scotty Miller. Yeah, I we've I, I mean, we spoke about the matchup. I don't really love it against the Chicago Bears, but Michael Gallup, he he has to be your flex play. And what I mean by that is you have to know or you, going into the weekend, saying if I get low point output here from Michael Gallup it's going to be okay because my other two wide receivers are strong enough to carry me through the week. But if Michael Gallup hits, I win. I win the week. That's how you have to look at him. While Scotty Miller is just more of a uh, safer wide receiver play. And Scotty Miller does have some weekly upside. 
since Tom Brady is his quarterback and is throwing some touchdowns. Can I ask you who you'd rather have rest of season? Michael Gallup, the home run, or McCole Hardman, the home run? That's that's a really that's interesting. That's a great question. I, I'm going to stick with Michael Gallup uh, for both questions. Um, what about McCole Gallup? Would Ooh, you, McCole what Gallup. Can, if I can get both players into one <laughs> slot, why would you not do that? Because um, then they're going to have four legs. It's going to be really awkward. Uh, they're, what, what, do you think they'll go out there and gallop? Hmm? Come on. Uh, with four legs, that's what uh, you do. But you, but <laughs> yes, but not, really. with, not also with four arms. You got an octopus situation, Jason. Which is it's good for receiving. Yeah, I mean, this sounds... I don't know. I don't know, man. You can offensive uh, pass interference with two arms. Let, let me let me let go me up ask with the this. other two. Is it better to catch a ball with one hand or two hands? Two. Well, what, is it better to catch a ball with two hands or four hands? <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. Two. Four. <laughs> okay. Two. All right. Um, well, yeah. So we've the, 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 what was the question? Oh, Gallup or McCall Harm? I will take Michael Gallup because uh, the Dallas Cowboys. They're like Dak is on pace to break all records <laughs> because of how much he has to throw the ball. So I will take Michael Gallup. That is not the situation for Hardman in the Kansas City Chiefs. And Gallup is still averaging six targets a game. That's not, you know, phenomenal, but it's enough to where in that offense, good games should come. We, You know, the, the, the consistency of wide receivers is bad. And so when you're in a short period of the season and you say, well, you've got a four-game sample, well – over the course of a 16 game sample how many good games is he going to have if he let's say he has eight good games and eight bad games that is surprisingly good for wide receivers so then where do the eight bad games come well if three of them come in the first four weeks you feel like he's dead that's not the reality of wide receivers true but it might be the re reality of michael gallup's new situation with cd lamb and dalton schultz fair i mean it, like if, if he has 12 bad games over the course of the season then some wide receivers do that too sure absolutely that's the question of what do you believe about Gallup and I believe Gallup is good in a good offense he's a good player and he's but he's more McCall Hardman this year than he ever has been before yeah, but I, I'm still with you guys I would take Gallup because I think there are more guaranteed downfield targets for him than the Hardman shots mm -hmm. but uh, unfortunately he has become a big play guy not an every week guy all right, Lev Bell, breaking news. He is going to be practicing. He's eligible to come off the IR. We had a YouTube question from Kevin. He said, do you trust him for a flex play this week against Arizona if he comes off the IR? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I agree. They they did the right thing here in putting him on a three-week break. We saw wide receivers uh, just pretty much across the board. I'll get two weeks, come back, be okay. But in that third week, then they were full go. I, I think that's the situation with Lev Bell. All right, later today we have the bonus episode of the show, the FootCast. For everybody supporting the show at jointhefoot.com, we appreciate all the support of this independent podcast. You guys are awesome, and we've got that coming up later this afternoon. And then tomorrow, Friday, we got starts of the week, all the matchups. Excited to get into it. That is it for today's episode of the show. May the news be kind to us heading into tomorrow. Oh, uh, yes. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.